Hi everyone, uh, Michael here. I'm going to talk to you a little more about this Active Arrow project. Posted a couple videos of just it working, and, uh, but not really going into detail about how it works or how, how you can do it yourself. So this video is going to be a little more in depth and kind of lead you to places or sites where you can buy um, buy the, the components or reference material uh, like the code that, so that you can do this yourself. All right, so let's take a quick look at just like the overall basic setup of it here. So the heart of it all is this uh, Arduino Metro, which is offered by Adafruit. Um, and then there are a couple components kind of, you know, that are built off that. So first one is this, this accelerometer um, or an IMU, which is inertial measurement unit, I think. Um, so this is also offered by Adafruit. Uh, then you got some relay drivers, um, and you know, basically the linear actuators are probably the other big thing. Um, this is just a five volt to 12 volt conversion. Um, so because some things on the board and some of the sensors require five volts, but some things like these actuators require 12 volts. So you kind of need both. So yeah, these, these actuators are, um, offered by Progressive Automation. Um, here's some information there if you want to screenshot it. Uh, I'll send. A, I'll put a link to their, their website as well. So they've got an internal potentiometer, so it kind of measures at what stroke or um, extension it's at, and that feeds back in via this harness all the way back to this metro. So, so it essentially will know, hey, at some point I've extended to position, let's say it's five out of 10 or I'm at position 10 out of 10 and it can use that and the, the code can decide, okay, I want you to go to position two out of 10 and that feedback comes back into the Arduino to let it know, hey, I have achieved that position that you asked me to do. Um, yeah, uh, so yeah, and these relay drivers also will put a uh, link, link uh, where you can get them uh, all from Adafruit. But uh, the beautiful thing about Adafruit is uh, they, they often come with like a lot of supplemental material like source code or not source code sorry but um, example code which you can base a lot of your code off of um, so yeah that's like the basic overall gist we'll see if it uh, works and plugs in together right now so All right, after some troubleshooting, figured it out. There's a broken pin after, uh, only got one plug in, but yeah. So breaking, high down force, acceleration. So good news is it still works even after just sitting. So no reason it shouldn't, but gremlins can appear for sure. So yeah, we'll go in, dig in a little bit to the code, uh, and the websites to show you where to get this stuff. And then also some footage from the from the test session out of Gingerman. So. All right, everyone, we are now in the computer. So this is IDE, which is essentially the coding environment that you use to program your Arduino. It's pretty simple, don't, don't be intimidated, but I wanna talk about just how the general logic or this, this thing is supposed to work. So there are th only three states it really goes to. There's DRS, which is a low drag mode, DF, which is a high downforce mode, and there's AB, which is a air brake setting. So at any point, the wing should only be in those modes or transitioning between those modes. And so the decision to hit any of these modes is based on lateral and longitudinal Excel. So that IMU that we mentioned, the LSM303, uh, measures measures lateral and longitudinal Excel, and then that feeds into this program. And based on that reading is where you essentially dictate this position. So th these numbers here are based on the potentiometer within those linear actuators. So the wing will say, oh, or sorry, the program will say, hey, we are at uh, low drag, you need to hit where we want to go to DRS mode, you need linear actuator, you need to hit the position of 350. Then it'll try and do that. Oh, I'm breaking hard. You need to hit the position of 60. So 
that that's essentially how it works. Uh, so if you look at it fully, it, it's actually pretty simple. A lot of it is just based on, hey, what is the current position of the, of the actuator? Where is my desired position of the actuator? And that tells you, oh, should I be going up or down? Pretty simple. So again, just looking at the overall logic from a logic flow path, ignore this first one because it's not implemented. There's no driver override switch yet. But the priority is at high AY, you should have high downforce mode. So if your AY reading is over a lateral cell setting, then you should be in high downforce. So that's the priority. Second priority is, oh, are you decelerating very hard? If that's the case, then you should be in air brake mode. Oh, are you accelerating with very low AY? Oh, then you should be in low drag mode. And then have you, if none of the conditions have been met by some time, so some counter, then you should also default to low drag mode. And if the counter has not been reached, then you just add to the counter and then you'd be in the loop again, which runs every hundred milliseconds. So, and then these are kind of a visual of like the settings that we I use. So it's, it's like, if you're braking, you should hit air brake, but if you're turning and braking, let's say you're in this region, you should be in downforce. Downforce takes priority based on that logic flow path. And then as you accelerate and you straighten out, then you'll be in the low drag mode. And then if you end up sitting around in the pits, let's say, and you're just not doing anything, that's where the counter comes in. So it'll start counting up and then again, it'll default to the low drag mode. So th these gaps are essentially history bands, which allow you to prevent toggling between like two modes, between like downforce, slow drag, downforce, slow drag, or air brake, downforce, air brake, downforce. Like this gap is large enough that based on the testing, it doesn't seem to toggle too much. And I guess with that, we'll just take a look at some testing. So hopefully that was enough um, to get you guys started, potentially. Uh, in the future, we'll probably make some more videos. And uh, so if you have any questions, ask in the comments and hopefully we can address them. And then also we can maybe start talking about some other cool projects. Uh, let us know if you're interested and we'll make more videos if it's uh, something you guys want to see.